What's up, addicts? Welcome to the Fantasy Addiction Network. In this video, we're going to be breaking down Eno Benjamin running back out of Arizona State and going over his potential fantasy outlook pre-draft. But before we get started, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and let's get going. Before we get started, check out the link in the description. We are offering a free tail kickoff special for our fan companion tool. Uh, you get access all the way up into the kickoff of the NFL season for absolutely free, so make sure you check out that link. All right, now, Eno Benjamin running back out of Arizona State. This guy isn't getting talked about in a lot of fantasy circles right now. Um, definitely not getting anywhere near the same buzz as a guy like Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, but I'm a little bit surprised by that because when you look metrics-wise, you look at what the strengths and skills of these two guys' game are, Honestly, Eno Benjamin is a quicker version of what Clyde Edwards Hilaire is. Maybe not as prolific as a pass catcher or a route runner, but still heavily involved in the passing game and um, every bit of the satellite type back that you want. You can see his best comparable here is Duke Johnson, but he also compares well to Aaron Jones. Um, don't hear what I'm not saying. He's not ever going to be a workhorse back. That's not his body frame, that's not his play style but most running backs in the NFL aren't anymore, and they can still be massively productive. Guys like Aaron Jones last year, Alvin Kamara, uh, that don't see a full workload, but still are incredibly productive fantasy assets. In the right system, I think Eno Benjamin is every bit as valuable as Clyde Edwards Hilaire, but as it stands right now, you could get him at a massive discount. We'll see if that changes once the NFL draft happens, uh, but even just comparing, like, so he's, two inches taller than Clyde Edwards Hilaire, about the same weight. So his frame is a little bit smaller, definitely give you that. Uh, but he has quicker 40 time, 56 percentile compared to 47 percentile for size adjusted uh, 40 yard dash time for Edwards Hilaire. Um, about the same burst score and better agility score. So overall, not that much different in terms of their prospect. 85th percentile dominator rating. It's not like he was, like Clyde Edwards Hilaire got to play with one of the best offenses that we've ever seen. Whereas Arizona State, it's not like Eno Benjamin was playing with a bunch of future NFL stars. His college yards per carry is somewhat concerning, but again, um, he's broken up, broken off enough long runs and playing with a crappy offensive line. You can expect this to be dependent on where he goes. 92nd percentile college target share though. Pretty ridiculous. 14% um, target share last year was crazy. Uh, 42, tar 42 receptions on 55 targets. Had 1,083 uh, rushing yards and 347 receiving yards last year. In his sophomore year, he had 300 carries, 1642 yards, and still 35 receptions for 263 yards. So this guy has a production profile that definitely is worth noting. If he goes to a team that has more of a power back, he could actually be really valuable fantasy asset in PPR leagues. Um, and again, I don't, I don't really understand why there's so much hype over Clyde Edwards Hilaire simply because he played with LSU. And don't hear what I'm not saying. I don't think Clyde Edwards Hilaire is necessarily bad, but you have to recognize that a lot of his production came from that incredible opportunity share that he had getting to play in LSU. But even last year, compare his, uh, junior year to uh you know benjamin's sophomore year again playing with arizona state you know benjamin had more rushing yards not as many receptions but more touchdowns i know stats for stats isn't necessarily a great comparison but i the point i'm trying to make is i don't understand the hype for clyde edwards hilaire when you're looking at a guy like you know benjamin that has a very similar skill set um I guess he, last year, I guess you could also fault him for having a few more fumbling issues. He'd only fumbled once in his first two years, and then last year he fumbled six times. So that could definitely get into his head. Uh, if that continues, that could definitely be very bad for his uh, career trajectory. But only doing it one year, we'll see if that ends up being a problem. But uh, they're both Benjamin and Hilaire are all right in the passing pass blocking game. Um, not really expecting a, a satellite back to typically do a lot of pass blocking. So 
I feel like it, I would much rather, there's a lot of running backs and receivers I'd rather have over Edward Hilaire in the first round where he's going right now, that you could sneak around and grab Eno Benjamin near the end of the second, early third, and unless his draft capital goes up massively, that has, in my opinion, the same outlook, if not a higher ceiling than Edward Hilaire. Maybe he has a lower floor, especially if that fumbling issue gets to his head, but why would you spend up for a guy like Edward Tiller when you can get Eno Benjamin later and grab another stud earlier? Just my just my opinion on the subject. You guys may disagree. If you do, feel free to hit me up in the comment section below and let me know why you guys disagree. Curious to see everyone's uh, input on this, and obviously everything will change. Once the NFL draft happens and we see where a lot of these guys go, that is going to uh, change a lot of our opinions pretty quickly. But overall, I see Eno Benjamin as a very similar project, uh, prospect to Edward Tiller. Same tier, but a guy that you can get a lot cheaper. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, we're going to keep breaking down uh, fantasy-relevant running backs, receivers, tight ends here in the course of the next coming days. And we're only about two weeks away from the NFL Draft, so pretty pumped for that. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.